something down in you want to give him thanks. Thank him till they can hear you down on Beale Street. Thank you! We give you thanks for another Lord's Day and another opportunity to stand before your people and declare your word. We ask that you would anoint these lips of clay, allow us to speak as an oracle of Christ, and we'll give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Give God a hand of praise and you may be seated. Oh, hallelujah. an atmosphere of praise in here. Bless you. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. That verse of scripture comes from Acts chapter 16, verse 25. I just want to talk to you a little bit about singing in troubled times. Praise God. As the people of God, 
we have to learn that troubled times are not designed to make us silent. But our Christianity is at its best when we face the trials and the, the vicissitudes of life, when others are giving up, committing suicide, standing at the crossroads wondering which way to, do, to go, not knowing what to do, God wants us to show the world that we have something within us that is stronger than the forces without. John said in 1 John chapter 4, for greater is he that is within you than he that is within the world. Problems will come, troubles will come, other people react. But while those who don't know God are reacting, God wants us to stay <coughs> tuned in to heaven and allow that which is within us to carry us through those difficult times. Now, I'm not going to take a lot of time with this story because I believe most of you are familiar with Paul's experience in Philippi. For it was in Philippi of Macedonia that the Holy Ghost sent him in order to help a group of women who were by the riverside daily in a prayer meeting. Paul wanted to go somewhere else, but he was forbidden of the Holy Ghost to go where he wanted to go, and while wondering in what direction he should travel, there stood in his night vision a man from Macedonia saying, come over into Macedonia and help us. And as he and his party went to Macedonia, they came to Philippi, the chief city of that portion of Macedonia and found a group of women reading the word of God, praying, but needing a sense of direction. And one thing about God, when you need a sense of direction, God will send someone who will give you guidance in the things of his word. Paul and Silas met those women, and there was one particular woman by the name of Lydia, a seller of purple, and this woman's heart was open. And when her heart was open, so was her house. I think a lot of times we spend too much time in church trying to get folk to open up their wallets and open up their purse and give to the church and to come and be faithful to the Lord when the first thing has not happened. You don't have to worry about a person opening their wallet if first of all they open their heart. <laughs> if your heart is open, then everything else is open for the worship and the service of God. God opened this woman's heart and consequently she opened her house and said, you men can live in my house. And as you walk daily from my house to the prayer meeting, then you will certainly uh, not have a long trek, maybe about two miles to travel. And while they were en route backwards and forth, there was a young girl, teenager probably, that had a spirit of divination, fortune telling. And she began to cry out, not out of her own mind, but the spirit that had possessed her in a taunting way. These are the men of God. They show us the way of salvation. And every day she was taunting them as they walked to and fro. And Paul got tired of it. And every once in a while you just get tired of the devil. 
picking at you in whatever method. And you have to be able to have the authority that God has given you as his child and speak under that authority and tell the devil I've had enough now. Shut up. And he told the devil in the girl said, now hold your peace and just come out of her. And when they cast the devil out of the girl, and you got to understand she was telling fortunes, but it was the spirit of the devil. Folk, don't get carried away with fortune tellers. Amen. And don't even get carried away with church fortune tellers. Amen. If you got the Holy Ghost, you got the greatest fortune teller. Because Jesus said concerning the Holy Ghost that he'll show you things to come. Amen. I don't need to dial up the psychic hotline. I don't need to go and sit in a meeting waiting for somebody to call me out and tell me my name and tell me my doctor's name and where I live. I, I don't need all that uh, because it's difficult for me to know whether he's doing it in the spirit. So when you get too far in the fortune telling, you, you get me messed up. I like to do it the simple way, the way Jesus did it. But Jesus said, if you need some help, ask and it shall be given. Amen. If you got a headache, I don't have to pick you out and tell you you got one. You tell me, and I'll pray for your headache. Amen. I'd like to do it the simple way. Uh, I just lost somebody. I can't help it. I'm sorry, y'all. But they cast the devil out of the girl, and when they cast the devil out of her, she couldn't tell any more fortunes. In other words, she became normal. I don't care what you say. This is a day uh, when the enemy is deceiving the minds of people. And the greatest thing you can do is be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and be normal. Amen. When I was a youngster growing up, you know, it was rare to find those people in the church and you know that there was some that had some emotional and some mental problems, but it's not like that anymore. The devil has released an arsenal of demons on this earth. And whether it's in your church, on your job, in your classroom, it's hard to find folk that's just normal. It's enough to be saved and sanctified and normal, having good mental health. And if you are saved and sanctified and not closed in your right mind, but clothed and in your right mind, got enough sense to keep your clothes on, you ought to thank God. When Paul cast the devil out of the girl, she couldn't tell any more fortunes. She became normal. But the men who were using her, hallelujah, they were a pimp of that day. They were not selling her body. They were selling her demonic gift. And when Paul cast the devil out of her, that demonic gift was gone. And you think they were happy? No. They drew them into the marketplace, beat them unmercifully, threw them in a prison dungeon. Hallelujah. This must have been somewhere in the evening time. But when they threw them in the dungeon at about sunset, they were quiet for the first few hours. And way over in the midnight, the Bible said at midnight, Midnight, the word mid simply means you're middle way, halfway in and halfway out. Hallelujah. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. You can say what you want to. We have to let God stand up in us at that time when he is not standing up in others. I'm in the middle of a bad situation, but I'm going to praise God anyhow. Not only sick, but the doctors are saying they don't hold most, much hope, but I'm going to sing anyhow. Hallelujah. On the job, and they're threatening that they're going to lay off a hundred people. 
and I'm only number 20 from the last one hired. So look like I'm going to be in the number, but I'm not going to panic. I'm going to sing anyhow. Now you got to learn that if God has given you a song, sing it. You may not have a voice like some of these singers that we have, but if you have a voice that's cracking, my God, even worse than a microphone full of static, sing anyhow. If they can't find you on the note and you're somewhere down in the crack, sing anyhow. If people say that I don't like the music that you make, then turn on the water and get in the shower, but sing anyhow. I don't care what you're going through. God does not want you to lose your song. If you got Jesus, you've got melody in your heart. If you got Jesus, you've got joy even when you're not happy. Happiness is built around circumstances. Happiness depends on what's happening. Anybody can be happy when good things are happening, but when bad things are happening and I'm not fully happy, I still have joy. Out of all, all the things I've been through, I still have joy. Paul and Silas at midnight they sang hallelujah how many times have I mentioned that the nightingale is no more beautiful singer than any other bird hallelujah other birds can sing a song that seemingly supersedes the nightingale but the special thing about the nightingale is the time that the nightingale sings they call her a nightingale because the other birds sing their songs in the day but at night time when it's dark they go somewhere and tuck their beaks under their wing but even at night when the other birds are scared to come out the nightingale opens and begin to sing her song the world can sing in the daylight of prosperity the world can sing in the daylight of good health but when you get in the midnight of a broken marriage when you get in the midnight of terrible domestic situation when you get in the midnight of financial bankruptcy bills are stacked high and you can't pay them when you get in the midnight of ill health living under a death sentence still you ask where is God my maker that gives songs in the night and I want you to know he'll give you a new song and you can sing it in the night season and sing it all the day long um, glory to God hallelujah God doesn't want us to be like the children of Israel in Psalm 137 it says by the rivers of Babylon that we sat down and we wept when we remember Zion Nebuchadnezzar marched against the city and destroyed the temple and burned the gates with fire and they deported the inhabitants down to Babylon and as they were leaving they looked back and saw all the gates on fire and saw the temple destroyed and they said let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth if I fail to remember you old Jerusalem let my right hand forget her cunning if I fail to remember thee and when they got down in the Babylon the folks said yes you are one of those Israelites we remember that you had a king named David they called him him the sweet psalmist of Israel so we would like to hear some of Zion's songs but they said we can't sing Zion's songs because we are in a strange land but I hear God saying it doesn't matter where you are in a strange land or locked up in a prison cell sing the joy of the Lord sing about the mighty king you serve. Sing 
about the Lord our God. He's strong and mighty. The Lord our God, he's mighty in battle. Sound the alarm in the holy mountain. He's wonderful. He's glorious and mighty in his power. Oh! tell somebody neighbor I don't know what you're going through but don't lose your song oh glory oh glory I got to quit hmm. hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody in here feel a little weak? You've been pushing your way. You've been pressing your way. Look like you can't make it. But I just want you to turn to somebody and tell them the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord. God some praise in here. Let me close. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises to God. And you know what? The prisoners heard them. Here they were locked up with other prisoners. They had done no crime, but they were working in the service of the Lord. Other prisoners had probably been cursing and swearing, but they heard Paul and Silas singing. You don't know how the people around you on your job, they are locked up, bound with chains of cocaine, bound by crack, bound in an illicit heterosexual relationship, bound in a homosexual relationship, Bound with a lying tongue, bound in a life of crime, and they expect you in the jailhouse to act like they acting. But when Paul and Silas start singing, I hear one prisoner saying to the other, what's wrong with those fellas? I haven't heard them say a word all night. Ever since they beat them up and threw them in the dungeon, they've been quiet. And I expected to hear them use some profanity, but here they are over there singing. One of them start praying and the other start singing. There's got to be something wrong with these fellas. And the world will thank you crazy when trouble is in your life and you keep on praising God. They think you're taking leave of your senses when you get fired and walk out saying hallelujah. They think something wrong with you when the doctor give you up and you said praise be unto God, but you got to keep on giving him glory. They sang and prayed until the prisoners heard them. But not only did the prisoners hear them, heaven heard them. Somebody said Paul was singing his raspy baritone, that Silas was singing his tenor. But when they got to the chorus of the song, God joined in with a low bass. And the rumble of heaven was so deep that the place start shaking and everybody's bands were loose and the prison doors came open oh sing your song till heaven joins in with you sing your song 
until your dungeon began to shake. Sing your song until your chains fall off. Sing your song until victory come into your life. Ah, glory! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody, give him some praise. Come on, give God some praise, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to give you 60 seconds. Praise him like you never praised him before. Come on. Time's running out. Come on. Praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God, somebody. Come on. Praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. God bless you.